But you ever brought anyone home before? It's yes. Uh, oh, oh, really? Wait, what? Oh, oh, was I there? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> six, six, six. Are you too old to go to the club? Mm. This is your daily catch up. <laughs> Hello, this might be in the middle of a conversation, <laughs> but basically this will tell you that if you enjoy the Daily Catch-Up podcast, subscribe and like this video. So after a uh, two-year hiatus, Hi not, hey. not, not really <laughs> of their own accord, la, uh, clubbing, nightlife, karaoke, hey. they are back. How do you guys feel? Do y'all do go when it was open? Are y'all at the age where y'all still go? Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you at the age where you've been before? <laughs> hey. I've been twice. Oh. So <laughs> Good job. Wait, 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 wait. So, wait, so which clubs? Wait, how old are you again? 24? 24 this year, yes. And you only been to clubs twice. Hey, there are people in our audience that have never been to club before because the past two years when they turn legal, right. they cannot go. That's true. So if you're 20 years old now, you've probably never been to a club. That's quite sad. Yeah. Unless, <laughs> unless, unless they got the other way. No, but last time got underage parties. What do you mean? It's specifically for underage people to come in, no alcohol, oh. but you can come to a club and listen to music and Dude, dance. the the I business think. proposition itself was such a risk. They were only targeting people between the ages of sixteen to mm. seventeen plus. Mm. Oh, that's, that's two years. Sixteen. Uh, yeah, it's less than two years, right? And this this two age group only. Then they sell wow. out every mocktails, single uh. night. Oh shit! Bec yeah, because there's this like group of people who are like really can't wait to club ready, but cannot club yet, and so then like it's it's yeah. big enough. Then they just go enough. someone's house pre-drink, as people do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ah. Then you just can club. Do you know that there is no law that prosecutes you for drinking oh. underage? You just yeah. cannot buy. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, but smoking different. Yeah, yeah, you cannot smoke. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. Right. So if you're caught smoking outside, right, NEA can catch you. If you're underage, uh, but if you're drinking, you're like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I think. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so you've been clubbing a lot. La. <laughs> <laughs> you've seen all the clubs. No, no, actually, not really. Eh. I'm very strict parents. So I, I have been to, uh, yes, la, I have my <laughs> clubbing phase, but also like at age 20, 21. I only started then. Yeah. All late bloomers. Uh. So anyway, <laughs> the, the, the thing about clubbing now is that it's, it's not like pre-COVID time. So you do need to take a supervised ART test. It doesn't have to be in person. Mm. Uh, it can be done remotely also using apps. Uh, and then and then you can go in. Uh. But How do you check though? Uh, whether it's supervised or whether you have a supervised negative test. No, like how do they supervise? Oh, so I did this. I, I gotta do this. I have like, when I swap, I don't know about y'all. I need to do this. Like cover uh. Yeah, I need to be touching my nose or I will sneeze. Like toothpick, uh? Yeah, yeah, like toothpick. <laughs> but that's courtesy, right? <laughs> but this one, I, I need to do this. Yeah. So I, I did one in Malaysia before I came back to Singapore. It's a supervised ART test. I think it's the, I think it's the same. So basically, you have to label your your ART thing. With the you, date. Yeah, with a, with a number. So they'll give you a number so uh -huh. that you cannot just swap it out for later. Uh, right. Right. So what you do is that they tell you, right, on the camera, it needs to have all the things laid out already and you cannot move anything out of frame. So the, the testing, the the swap, and then the where the liquid is, and then you do, you do everything within a five minute countdown. But he's saying like, if you cover like that, right? Yeah, so cannot like, you have to show, you have, yeah. to, like, you have to show that it went in, and then uh. how deep it went, and then you have to show yourself doing the thing, and then... So there's someone's job that is just to watch people swap? Uh? I think there'll be doctors that... But you can, you can imagine it's so much faster than them, because as opposed to like, going one by one to like, put mm -hmm. the swap into people's nose, yeah. like, all they're just watching is five minute clips of like, non-stop. Of just people doing the thing. Oh, so it's so like, boring correct, though. Correct, 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 correct. <laughs> I will fall asleep. Eh? Hey, but it pays well. Uh. <laughs> like <laughs> the safe, safe distancing and messaging. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a little bit cheaper, I think, than going down to like do a, a right. actual supervised ART. Mm. So are you planning to go club? Yes. Whoa, oh, really? Really? Oh, little shit. I'm so <laughs> cheapish. I'm the old man in the club now. <laughs> no, but pre-COVID, you didn't even go though. I did. Wow. What do you mean? <laughs> I see the club. Hey, he clubber. Hey. He clubber. <laughs> so I... I I didn't have a party face. Like I, I completely skipped it. Like I went like just cause I turned eighteen or my friends turning eighteen mm. and go to their birthday parties, that kind. Um <laughs> yeah. So like at age eighteen, nineteen, maybe I went combined total three times. <laughs> then I stopped going. <laughs> All the way till I'm twenty five. Then I joined an influencer marketing company. Hey. Okay. Hey. Then, then it begins. Hey. I mean, I mean, this, this, this was many years ago. <laughs> Man, a long time, like seven years ago, eh. Yeah. Oh okay, shit. But what is the appeal of it? Like, I feel like I, I, I go purely for like, uh, just, it's just part of a life experience that I kind of need to check off, right? But then I go there, my eardrum bursts. Mm. Then I'm not very into dancing or what Yeah, also. I cannot dance. I cannot drink. <laughs> I attach. Even if I wasn't attached, I don't dare to talk to girls. <laughs> so I, it was just like all-round awkward. 
painful experience for me. I think it really depends. Cause like, oh, I don't know if I can say this, but like, I mean, the first time <laughs> I went, I wasn't of legal age lah. Singapore. Mm. In Singapore. Hey. <laughs> hey. Well, like, How do you even get the limitation? Okay. We, this is all scripted and we're just performing a show like <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, allegedly, sure. allegedly. <laughs> um, but the experience of going underage for the first time right ha- no other clubbing experience has ever topped that and it wasn't even the best clubbing experience it was it's just because it's thrilling uh, it, was, it was the thrill of like oh my god I, I went through yeah, yeah, yeah. and like oh what, what's, what's around this corner oh what's around this corner like you don't know what's around <laughs> all the other corners right and it's like oh my god they're serving me drinks like nowhere like you go out to a restaurant they're not even going to serve you a drink and here you are that you like everything is just <laughs> open for business you know like drinks la, fl- like talking to girls la, like everything is just is it way more world. expensive for a guy to go to a club than for a girl to go to Confirm a club? Confirm ah. A girl can yeah. go to a yeah. club with wa- without wallet. Only on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies night. Only Ladies on Wednesdays. Wednesday. Yeah. Depending on the bar, sometimes it's Thursdays. But oh, would yes. you accept drinks from strangers? No, actually I got offered a few right. Then <laughs> I'm very <laughs> scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like yeah, I, I would... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. A few times right, I was damn scared. I was like, I didn't, I watched all those um, movies where they drug the girl uh, <laughs> drink right. Then I'm like, oh, yeah. shit, shit. Nah, just like no, I never. Did. Just, just watch no, the bar then. That, that's did. what your parents tell you, though. I remember my mum tell me like, oh, I going to club. Then said, go where? Like go disco. I like, yeah, go disco. Disco <laughs> tech. Uh, I go disco tech. Hey, disco tech must be very careful. Everyone yeah. try to spike your ass. Then, like, <laughs> like, Nobody uh, oh wants to. Oh my god. Then I had this, I had this friend, right? Good friend of mine in secondary school. He he retained few times, and he's like rather big size, and so he had way more life experience than us, lah. Um, to give you a sense of how often he retained. He drove in to collect his O-level results. <laughs> Wait, but he persevered though. No, he drove me also. That's all good. That's all good. Yeah. So, um, and then well, he was telling me about how he, he went to a club and all that shit and then how like, um, there, are, there are girls that, like, you know, you walk past then they just squeeze Then I'm like, <gasps> then like, oh, I was like, I don't know, maybe 17 or 16. Then I was damn excited by the prospect of that. Like, oh my God, cause like, excited. My, my friend's chunky. Like, I love him. It's chunky. Yeah. You know? And wow, he's like, oh, he go in there, he got get himself molested. Like, I got a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> I got a good shot, right? Wow, then I damn excited. Then my mother tell me, why you go discotheque, oh, and people gonna spike. <laughs> then gonna go inside. Oh my god, and gonna be people out there trying to rape me. And I'm like, then as as a dude that just like hit puberty a few years, right? This is a mighty exciting prospect. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that. It's not like that. It's just like shit's expensive. Yeah, yeah. it's expensive to cut. It's just crowded stuff. <laughs> I, I think it really depends what age you go, right? Because I remember going when I was 18 um, and like my friends and I would go to like Zook, right? And then uh, the Velvet Underground room, which is known to be a little bit more chill, right? We always be like, hey, don't, don't, don't go that side. That one is all like the 27 old year old. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The old, uh. Like I remember we said all old the 30 people, plus. then it's like, I remember the, the, the age, right? The many number was like, we got like people like 27 year olds all there. Then we were all like, yeah, yeah, don't go, don't go. Then boring. So the whole idea is that we pre-drink, we just pay for entry and then we're already like buzzed, right? So we're just yeah. like dance floor and then we make use of the entire time dance floor. Then which is what? Uh, which is the fun? Which is, which is the young people zone? Uh? I forgot the name. Uh, uh, you know, right? You know, zone. In Zook, no. in Zook. Oh, future. 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 Yeah. Yeah. She said first. Future with a PH. Like a future. I love future. Yeah. Future. <laughs> yeah. future. That, that future phase lasted like maybe two years for me. Then after that, like when I hit 25, right? Then I look at all these 18 years going on like, what? They're them young, they can afford being here, man. And then <laughs> the whole the whole idea of clubbing now, right, is like you just get a table, sofa, and just sit there for the whole time, just just chilling. You didn't realize that's what the cool people do. Mm. I did not know yeah. how expensive oh, it people. was to get a table though. Is there an accident? Yeah, it's yeah. like eight hundred dollars, what even? Depends on minimum size. So like some places is four hundred, five hundred. If you go to like bigger places like MBS or what sometimes like one point two K or what. Yeah, I know. I remember spending oh, almost a thousand dollars at Zook. <gasps> like we all chipped in, like a ten of us, right? We all chipped in for a thousand dollar table. Yeah. But there will be like max seats or so la. But the, uh, yeah, the whole but we are not them anyways most of the time. Because so. you're on the dance floor, because you're still young. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would <laughs> be there. <laughs> like, yeah, I would just sit there. And then yeah. Then it, it was a stage whereby Pet thought, okay, I'm I settled down with this dude that doesn't like to party, uh. you know? It's like a very stable guy. Uh. Then, then my party phase began at 25. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then like club entrance were free for me suddenly because I go influencers. Mm. And they were like, wow, what's some of the best looking people in Singapore all partying together? So, and John. So I didn't just meet up. No, no, no. Then after that, in, in order to try and get myself permission, like permit to be there, right? I invite Pat to come lah. Uh. Mm. And and then she just sees that I just sit there. And then it just doubles in a hit, right? The amount of anger <laughs> that she has. You, you go and then just suffer. Huh? You just go in there and sit down and then you're gonna contribute to the f- people, you know what? 
And you just say you barely drink. Pat was so perplexed on why I had to be there. Mm. And so was I. <laughs> No, but really there's, a, the, there's a certain thrill of just being there. That's the fun part now. Like when you get older, right? It's just the sitting down and just people watching, but also knowing that you have your drinks with your friends. It's the environment. <laughs> it's, yeah. You could do it in a bar, but it's not yeah. the same environment. No, no, no. There for the dance floor. <laughs> no, <for> the, <laughs> what you want to do? You sit down there. Yeah, do you nothing. go for a dance floor like 20 minutes, enough cardio already. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Take a break. That's where you take a break. Not sit there for the entire hour. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And sure. my <laughs> first ever club, right? Got like, I think at one point in the night, maybe like 2 3 a.m., like three of us sit there and we sleeping. What time was it? Oh, 3 a.m.? Yeah, 3 a.m. already. Then, because we stay until like the club almost closing. So you pre-drink at the party can't start at like 7 p.m. because it's her birthday. Then after that, pre-drink, after that, go to the club. Then, uh, yeah, the club is so sad, you know what I mean? It's just a, like, when you go onto the dance floor, then everybody have to form a circle in order to protect the most chill girl. Wow. Then I after that, then Don't do that. I, I did that at 18. Hey, that's <laughs> move. Yeah, Don't boy, it's so annoying. annoying. Yeah, oh my god. Oh, but so then the annoying. guy from the side trying to squeeze in, then clearly the girl don't want the guy though. No, then but, so we have to protect her. Sometimes the guys do that, right? And the girls don't even ask for it. Mm. But then the guys are like, hey, we are the guy part of this entire group. We're going to protect correct, you. Correct, correct. No, you, you think about this. this. These girls, right? If they really wanted to dance with the guys they came with, they didn't need to come to the club. <laughs> okay? Just <laughs> let it marinate in your head. Don't pretend to be a protector. Ouch. I did that. I did that for like one, two years. Then I realized, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Yeah, and so now the girls that you actually wanted to come to the club with and dance with doesn't want to dance with you. And then now they're annoyed with you because you're not letting them dance yeah. with the other guys. No, and then they cannot... You, they cannot be like, then can you just move aside yeah, and yeah, like yeah, the yeah. other guys can because they feel like they feel very slutty, ma. Uh, you know? But then why did they come all this way? Stay up all these hours. Dress up. That's put right, on makeup. sister. <laughs> Confirm. She yes. has a comment about how all the NS boys are. They come to the club oh, and they don't at that time, right? So all the NS boys are they all wear the same thing. Wait, you like thing. or don't like? Don't like. Oh. They, no, they wear the same thing. It's like a uniform, you know. Like on Friday nights or something, they'll come in a white shirt, white t-shirt and jeans and a cap because no hair, right? Yeah, so no a cap. And they all wear the same thing. And the converse yeah. shoes. And then they dance like this. Not kidding. They dance like this and they stand in the middle Which of the dance floor. Which club you go to? Yeah. No! <laughs> <laughs> the future so, part. Yeah. Then about no, it, it's not the future part. That's why I went to the future. Floor. Oh. Because the, the main Zoop place was the order. I must say, right, in old Zoop, right, there is one feature that always gets me. Like, it's a damn fulfilling. No. no. I love Mambo, uh. but in the main in the main room, right, I can't remember what it's called. So, like, after maybe 10 minutes, right, they will do this thing with the foam. Like, like it's not foam, it's like, it's like it will just. And it's like smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a massive smoke yeah, yeah, yeah. machine from the top. Oh my right. god, Kelvin was it's talking like a, about this. Like it's, yeah, I hate it. it's, it's the best Where's feeling it? ever because you suddenly get into a stage where, oh my god, I cannot see anything and it's just damn cold and it's like. Let's go and usually at the drop of the music. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're but it's shortly after they closing the club, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. It's the chase minutes. you out, uh. it's but the it's chase the, you out, Canon. It's just the shockest feeling ever. No, the, okay, there was this time, right, where I, I remember my my um my cousin's girlfriend. Um it was a, a countdown, and then with that's where Singapore first had the foam party. Mm. Uh. Mm. Have you heard about it? The the foam is like legit like like shower foam foam. Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah. Like fixed yeah. no kind, but yeah. like Wait. Uh, Hun. I had it uh, at Maki. <laughs> right. Maki and, oh, you really seen it all. Right? And then there was this place in Singapore where a lot of, I'm just gonna say as it is, a lot of foreign workers would show up to these parties and then when the foam douse everyone, right? They take out shirt. The molestation begins. Oh. Yeah. Oh and God. it was it was very rampant. It, there was a period in Singapore where it was like that. Then they had to stop the foam parties because it was not safe. Oh my god. Yeah, because no, you literally can do and run away. Like no one can catch you. Oh. But yeah, it became very lost. rampant that people started reporting it afterward. Because right, right. it's not like it's not to the point where people burst out crying and they feel dirty on the spot, you know, that kind mm-hmm. of shit. It's just you you just felt it, you felt pissed off that kind. Mm. You know, you won't go home, but then after that you all start blogging about it tomorrow. It's blogging like, yeah. uh, or like telling your friends about it tomorrow. Non Zanga. Speaking of dancers, right? So at my first club experience also. Yes. So because of where the area we're sitting at, right, is a table that is directly there's a dancer that comes out every like every, I think every hour she'll come out one time. Then she's dancing, but then I mean back facing us lah. But then she's Ooh. dancing like seductively, and then after that, the moment she turned around, her whole face drops. Yeah, and then she come down. Then it's her like face drop. What do you mean? As in like how she's smiling ma, when she's dancing. Oh. It's as though like she I mean she no. It seemed like she no choice but to be there. So it just felt like a very sad moment every time she had to go up and dance. Then hmm. so the club experience overall was not a very great one. Which reminds me to my first strip club experience. Oh. Strip hey. club. So was it Moulin Rouge in Phuket? You know why it's in Phuket? <laughs> it's called um it's called the Devil's Playground. Oh no. Uh, no 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 no. Moulin Rouge. Uh, yeah, yeah oh. maybe maybe it's the Devil's yeah, yeah. Playground. 
Like the, the place is called Devil's Playground. So everyone's all cool and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Can't, can't go into explicit details, right? <laughs> we were, like I was with Pat, la, so two of us. And then it got rather late. Um, and then it's my first overall experience at a strip club, but not my exactly first time there, right? Mm. And then when the lights on, right, everyone just started demanding money. Oh. Is it because, yeah. Is it because they dance with you? Or yeah. What? Oh. Like so, like now is the time to pay up because I gotta go, ma. The whole illusion just breaks. Yeah, it just it just ends. Like they just stop. They just get up. They don't care because after, before that they would be vying for everybody's attention. Yeah. Then when time's up, they can no longer That's play true. that game already, right? It's like a, okay, okay, pay me for my time. <laughs> Wait, so how much do you give? Like, what's the what's the market rate? <laughs> I don't know. I I, I don't asking really for know. Asking for a friend. Uh. <laughs> asking for a friend. But I, I, I think I've said this before that mm. my my first first time stepping into it right was for my brother in law's tech night, and I was late mm. for that trip right, and so I think they needed to incriminate the brother of the bride, and so I had, um, I had like two strippers like really a lot on like a. Kind of, you know. Um, <laughs> His shirt almost there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just right here. Just here to go money. <laughs> oh, you have to censor. <laughs> then, then after that, I realized I was like, oh my god, y'all must have spent a lot of money to incriminate me, lah. So I asked how much. Then they bought. Oh, I bought like two drinks or three drinks. Uh, then I went to find out the two drinks, three drinks amounted to twenty one dollars. It's it's not bad one, la. It's great. It's not bad one. It's, oh. That's why they call it the Devil's Playground. <laughs> yeah. So, really so then when I left right and Pat and I on, on, on like on the street we're going back to a hotel, right? And then um it was very strange because we overtook this girl, right? Then she was, was uh, yeah. super Oh my god, then you feel very bad because after that you realize she dressed like a because before that you don't know what's her mm, normal life. What's her normal life now? Uh, yeah. She's wearing some micro bikini and all that stuff, right? Um and then when and then when she got then you realize she dressed like a like a university student, that kind <gasps> after you feel it. But you don't touch them, like you know what I'm saying? You don't sure, touch them. Sure. Yeah. But no 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 wait! Yeah, you no, don't let them run. You cannot touch them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You cannot. Uh, they will, they will so whatever they do to you, then yeah, you, you cannot to touch them. Correct. Just enjoy. They, I mean, they can grab your hand, but uh, you don't own self. Yeah. Oh, because okay, okay. the bouncer always watching us. Uh, always watching. <laughs> the bouncer is like a jealous boyfriend. Yeah. Speaking of turning lights on, the TikTok right has been coming up with so many tips and tricks on like how to go clubbing right when the news broke. So one of it was go there early and leave early so that the illusion doesn't break when the light's on you realise that a guy them ugly. <laughs> or oh, the girl them ugly. Yeah. So they ask you to go home early so that you can live with that. Like like illusion. leave the club earlier lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think sometimes... I'm all for leaving earlier. Because yeah. sometimes it's like you, you meet a girl on the dance floor right? or like a guy, I mean, depending on what where you swing or how you swing, right? And then like, you just want the night to continue but or then you don't it, know... If you swing. Okay, okay here you go. <laughs> but you don't... <laughs> Don't incriminate me, no. <laughs> like no, but sometimes like you 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 drag the night too long because like you you when you drink right you get to a certain high and then you're dancing right and then it's damn shock and then the zook thing comes and you're like oh, oh, oh the exhaust is damn shock <laughs> then that's around the good <laughs> that's around that? the right time to be like wanna yeah, wanna yeah. get out of here you know but you try and drag the night too long until like she starts to sober up you start to sober and then you realize. This wasn't a great idea. Then your beer goggles also start to clear up again. She's not beer really that goggles. good. She see you so you're not really that good looking, and then everyone just goes. Okay lah, bye. But you ever brought anyone home before? Hey. Just lie about it though, just lie about it. <laughs> yes. <Whoa. Damn. laughs> she ended up being my girlfriend. Uh, oh, oh, really? Wait, what? Oh, oh, was I there? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> six, six, six. Tell the story. <laughs> oh, that's a story? For real, sir? <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not. Yeah, right. That's I, what you I just, just lie. I was like, lie about what? Oh, lie by saying no lah. Oh no, I just I don't know. I thought you were just gonna lie. Um... No, so so that so I haven't, but that's my lesson, right? Because I kept dragging the night too long until we realized. I think I had to marry her. What the? F- <laughs> 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 Don't drag it out, guys. Let's, let's see marry her. Don't drag it out. Like just just say hey. It was the Ryan Gosling line, right? In Crazy Stupid Love, he goes, "Wanna get out of here?" And then she's like, "Yeah." And then we're like, "You could go ah." Then you go where? Oh, your home imagination. Ah. Tapau. Oh, oh. Wow. I'm go home. Okay. The truth. Yeah. They go out, then they go their separate ways. <laughs> but yeah, I saw the same thing. Like it was something about stamina. The person was saying, like leave because also because you, you're old. You haven't clubbed in so long. Your stamina not there already. Leave early. Mm. It's always good to leave early, lah. When the light turns on, right, everyone's rushing out. Then it's very like uncomfortable. So, like, speaking of, there yeah. was right when I went out of the club the first time, right. There's just this like girl just lying on the floor, like completely blacked out. Then two guys like there trying to, okay, I assume are uh, her friends like trying to help her. But I just think like, is it not so unsafe, right? If you don't know how to take care of yourself, then if 
Yeah. I mean, if the friends had ill intentions or if she hadn't been there with friends, right? GG then GD. completely cannot hold her liquor or take care of herself, then just pass out like that. I wonder whether that's why like partners don't like their partners to go to club. Actually, yeah. ethical, right? I have seen more people no, passed out outside of ethical. ethical. No, no, I love ethical. <laughs> but like, I've seen, I've definitely always seen at least one girl passed out outside of ethical when it is not the same for other girl. And you are reading this book, right? And it's you were talking about. I, I don't want to make it boring about like gender equality or all that, right? But actually, the book was saying how because women are trying to show that they are at the same level as men, right? They try to to match for match. So if you're going out with guys, right? Girls try, try to drink as much as the guy drinks. But in reality, biology, right? Like you're more likely to get drunk if you are of a smaller physique because it's based on your like your yep. blood, like blood, 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 blood ratios and stuff like that, uh-huh. la. So girls are more likely to drink more than they should based on their body, but don't realize that because they're trying to match one for one for what the guys are drinking. And when you reach a stage where you black out, right, it's actually very dangerous because you don't realize it until two hours later that you are completely blacked out. But you might still exactly. be awake and you don't have any recollection about what <gasps> happened, which means yeah. that oh, your so decisions, not fainted, uh? you no. haven't fainted yet, but your blackout happens right about one or two hours before that. You reach oh. a stage that you're blacked out. So you, your decisions right, are not being made rationally at all. And you also are making very, very short-term decisions just based on what you want today. So there was a case of a girl, right, who apparently uh, was hanging out with this guy, but she was already, like, with a boyfriend. She has a boyfriend. And she's very, very faithful. But for some reason, she was flirting with this guy because she was blacked out already. She was not herself. And then the guy got accused for rape because she has no recollection. And she said, why would I even flirt with a guy? Because I wouldn't. Wait, how did it escalate to rape, though? Because some somebody found him and her, uh, like, on top, he was on top of her at like the the college like yard, oh, and then she was completely passed out, and then when she woke up, she said, "I have no idea who this guy is." When she was actually blacked out during the party, blacked have, out you, have you blacked out before? No, I make it a point not to ever reach that. Because right. I have to reach because my parents quite strict, so I make sure I have to go home. Right? If they ask me logical question, I have to reply logically. Right. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, on them like so many times, my sister come back and wow, I want to lie down at the right after the front door, <laughs> you know, or like. <laughs> Lie down in the kitchen because want to get a drink, then headache. So the sensible thing to do is get low, man. Get low. Yeah. <laughs> get low sleep. You know, not going to take water at that time, right? Then wow, she's there. Then you, we have to be calm for each other. Mm. Then go vomit outside the porch. Mm. <sighs> wow, that's the most rubber. Yeah, cannot let my parents see me drunk at all, ever. I, I was only blacked out once. Usually, my best high is when I'm like just tipsy, right? So there's there's usually sober, tipsy. High. Drunk, blacked out. No, high, oh, then, oh, then right, blacked out, right. right? She also knows the steps. Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry. So like tipsy is always the best and it's good to know where your tipsy level is. Mm, uh. But tipsy is also where I make very reckless short-term decisions, right? So someone dared me to finish everybody's drink on the table. Okay, yeah. And I went, like he doubted that I could do it, so, which means I went and finished every <laughs> single person's drink. Right? So and I, fragile, I, I mean. <laughs> very fragile. And I ended up, no, this, someone was like probably 18 or 19. And I ended up like in my friend's house because apparently I couldn't go back. I couldn't tell what my address was. <gasps> And I vomited on the roof, like the ceiling of the cab, all the way until the passenger seat. So oh, it was right. like leaking and dripping. Merlion. I, I, you know, I don't vomit from alcohol <gasps> until that one point of time in my life that changed everything. Then I just I keep, keep vomiting. No. <laughs> <laughs> For like many years, I, I just, I literally cannot. Like I feel it, like I can, I can drink a lot and then I would only feel the nausea on the cap right back. Mm-hmm. So like half the cap right back is, I just, Hold it there for You're the like most a- uncomfortable 30 minutes, right? Then I reach home, I open the door already, I go, uh, then I'm done. <sighs> wow, then the last 30 minutes was so oh, pain, eh. It was so <laughs> pain, I was trying to hold everything in. Uh. When you should have just let it go. Yeah, but it was just a bird, but you never really know. Uh. I, I don't really enjoy drinking, but when I do, I just get rid of Then I could usually think. And this happens for 99.9% of all my experiences out drinking and partying until my stack night where... So, I think it was... Jackie, Jackie, my business partner, ha- has a friend that, that booked out a, 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 a section of the club for us. Mm. So he said they booked our table from like nine o'clock onwards. So it, my stack night was in Manila. So we had we had nothing to do. Ma. It's, it's not like, a, oh, why don't go to my house? Let's go to your house. You know, that kind of thing. It's like, yeah. we don't know what to do. Then, then she is just dispersed la, in, in Manila. It's not like, you know, let's go here and go. That's after dinner, we finish eight o'clock. And we're like, oh, we'll just wait one more hour. Our reservation at nine o'clock, we just go there. You know? So at nine o'clock, it was like empty. La. It's like, it's exactly how you expect Zook would be here at nine o'clock, right? So we just sat there and then the owner came and said hi and then he just flooded our table with with drinks, right? Then at 11 p.m., right, I was lying down on the couch. Then at 12 o'clock, Jackie sent me home. Huh? So you didn't even get to enjoy your own- I didn't. But that's, the rest did. That's the thing, I feel like <laughs> these nights, right, 
it's always for the friends to enjoy rather than you because they try to get you drunk so but hard. No one, right? no one tried to get me drunk. I don't know what happened. I just had four drinks and I don't know what happened. I th- was the TikToker that you were referring to Royal Peck? Uh? I never see that. I think it's like <laughs> a pet but like Royal. He also said another, he had another advice which I think a lot of guys can uh, can resonate with which was bring a helmet. The helmet uh, <laughs> that you can put in your wallet which is a Have you done la. that before? Yeah. I've done yeah. that I never used it. <laughs> I was just saying. So like off camera. It's just like an echo cool thing you know. That's, it's like a guitar pick. I also had that in my wallet. <laughs> yeah, I, also <laughs> had, I still have it in my wallet. It's like an cool thing, you know? Like, you know, I remember being 18, right? And very naive. So, like, go out, think, oh, go clubbing. Wow, oh, I can find girls, maybe, like, have sex or whatever, like, after, like, <laughs> home, right? It's so, like super naive. That, that was the idea, right? So, I remember my friends and I, we but all most had. Most people it actually have, but it's not us. It's not us. It's not us. <laughs> so, my friends and I, I remember we had corners in our wallet, right? But then all of them got to use theirs. Oh, mine right yours is the spare one five years later I still had mine expired also <laughs> leaking right. also still, st- was still there I, I out, eventually right. threw it smell like sex <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but what if you had to bring a girl home right then you have no condom will you let's say John give you he said hey I have a have will you take his one oh yeah la, of think course la. La. Yeah. but it's like for, you don't know whether it's like five years huh, better than no condoms no no condoms, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> condoms got expiry date it's for the girl it's for the, it's for the girl to feel at ease uh, yeah. no but if you we always think that we can control one the thing is, is that if if you brought home a girl, right, and then you took out a corner from a wallet, right, would she feel like, oh my god, he he really he cares about protection, or like, oh He's my god, he was sex. expecting this tonight? <laughs> wow, <laughs> I don't know. No, I feel like if it's from a club, then it's kind of expected because like you go there, maybe you are looking for something. Then mm. the girls also looking for something. Then two hands clap, and other things also clap. <laughs> mm. <laughs> then, okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will feel like if you take out the condo, I feel like, eh, hey, was it expecting that? But also at the same time, thankful. Oh, hang, oh, hang. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hang. Hang. oh my god, I'm such a slut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I never. I wonder so. how yeah. many people regret the morning after, like their one night stands. No, but you go to the club sober though. So if you go to the club already looking for something, it's yeah, it's whether you go to the club not expecting something and then you end up la. But but you you know like in this day and age you can't even say a shit like that anymore. Yeah, yeah. I realized like we're gonna get cancelled. Correct. All the all the mentality that we had like ten years ago, right? Wow, twelve years ago when I first started going clubbing, I realized wow, I really cannot say a lot of that shit. But if you were going home with a girl and then she was the one to take out a condom, quite quite shocked, I would think. Coffer. Yeah, it's no, like but it, it does the same question not apply though. Then are you like was she like pre- expecting expecting sex. something and therefore she prepares some more. Eh? For a eighteen year old boy right, who is looking like who's super oh, horny it right. Matter. Yeah, it does, it does a, a matter. slutty girl is actually a great thing. Yeah. It's Whether not, or not you're, you're not slut, right? Only matters to girls. Guys don't care. Yeah, you're Can not. We still say slut today. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't sorry, for my old school dictionary. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we 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 don't shame you. We don't shun you. Yeah. You got any friends that go home with guys before? I have. I'm very worried. Like sometimes, oh. right? I go with like both guy and girlfriends. Like they're not friends, but mutual friends. I'm their mutual friend, so right. I bring them together. Oh, like, you feel ah. Yeah, oh. and then like halfway through the night, right? I cannot find her. Then like I texted her, hello. I never never to reply me. Then end up the guy texted me. By the way, I'm bringing her home. Thanks for cooking us up, <laughs> Shums. I was then worried that like. Then she's uh, sensitive. Yeah, she's like, hey, I've known you for three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why oh, you never bring me? Then <laughs> she had a club alone the inside of your room. <laughs> oh my god! Speaking of inside of your room, I recently saw a TikTok. This girl, she showed this guy's room, right? And then she said, right, I'm quite into this guy. Has anyone seen this room before? <gasps> and then there was actually someone who replied saying, Yeah, he cheat on me. No, don't go, don't stay with him. Uh, yeah, no, I I hate these people who like. Okay, fair enough. You try to look out for yourself, but you set yourself up for failure. You know what I mean? But is it not protecting yourself though? But a guy can change, right? Or a girl can change oh, also, right? Is a cheater always a cheater? Dun, dun, dun. Mm. No, but that's not the question though. <laughs> the question is, have you seen the inside of this room? Uh? Then have lah, his ex-girlfriend seen it, lo. Is that wrong though? Yeah. No, so then it's for her to, whoever has seen it, whoever is the ex, right? Then can say out red flags before you get into this relationship, before you commit. Ma. Yeah, but it's the ex- problem with modern dating, which I keep talking exactly. about. Exactly. If you're already broken up, right, more chances than not, you're going to leave a negative review. Right? It's the same reason why like bad people who write bad reviews write bad reviews because you have something to complain about. So you set yourself up for failure as opposed to just giving this guy a chance and get to know mm. him and then see where it goes. Or like you're finding problems with some pe- with people, exactly. you know, before it even begins. Like everything's too good to be true and you don't allow yourself to just experience it. Some relatable stories from Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Such as... 
eating uh, sausages and bangers and man. It's after. so good though. So good. I don't know whether you're drunk or not, but it's so Wait, good. Wait, actual, so like, actual food sausage. So right, just yeah. outside the, the entrance, right, there, there was a the truck. Means, I, I'm not expecting that from you. I don't know what's yeah, happening at this club, so I never go. There's a, there's a food truck outside. I think one of the first few food trucks ever in Singapore, actually. The only one I know, yeah. Yeah. They would sell bangers and mash just outside Zook. So you drunk, drunk, drunk a bit, What's right? a banger? Sausage. Oh. You keep saying that. It's a sausage. You're making me feel dirty. <laughs> Sausages and mashed potatoes. It's so good it's when so you are good. drunk and high at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Yeah. So good. I once popped three. Like, like I spent more on that than drinks that night. Oh, I, oh wow. it's expensive. It's that, that, that good. Says a, says a lot about huh? you. Know? It's expensive. <laughs> it's marked up like 15 uh, bucks, that kind, you know? Or like 12 bucks, that kind. Yeah, but it's damn sure. Are you the kind that, are you guys the kind that will go like eat supper after clubbing? Sometimes. If you are still, uh, if you can sober up, la, if mm. you're blacked out already, like, just go home. If the pretty girl is in the group, lah. Oh, otherwise you go home. <laughs> Actually, it's that, lah. No, it's no, really that. Yeah. No, no, I'm tired already. Eh. You don't want to stay at the. Yeah, so like at, at eleven plus, I'm going. Eh. Yeah. So it's like, oh, still anyway, still don't go, still want to eat. But sometimes you want to prolong the night, no? Yeah. 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 So, so it's the pretty girl is there. Yeah. yeah. Only if the pretty girl is there. That's la. why, because yeah. it's like, uh, just, just <laughs> if she left first, then I'm, <laughs> I'm done. I'm, done. I'm, <laughs> I'm going already. Oh, no, that, just around the corner from Zoo, there's this um curry curry peng place. It's damn shock. So like that's one option. Then there's bakute abalone noodle thing. Got behind, and then now got Haiti Lao. Every corner you see got Haiti Lao. That's the place to be now. I support Haiti Lao. Or beauty in the pot, just to be, <laughs> <laughs> just to be balanced. Um, did any of you go on the No, I went like twenty twenty one because I strict. I went for underage parties lah, legally underage parties. So there's this story of a of a person right who admits to altering his NRIC to enter clubs and bars. So what did he did right was that he go and scan his uh his NRIC. You go and edit the numbers, right, as you do, and then go and print out and laminate. Quite and effort, he, though. It's a lot of effort. Oh, laminating your IC, yeah. But it's quite obvious because the Singapore IC is a cut, though. Yeah. <laughs> then the bouncer let him in. No, la, he couldn't get a court. Business, uh. When was this? Cannot, la. Uh, uh, this was in uh, 2021, July. Oh, last like year. Last year. Yeah. He was 17 years old. So he he basically just. Uh, he got. <laughs> This, this is the second paragraph of the article. Despite being caught at every night spot he attempted to <laughs> enter, <laughs> the 17-year-old boy continued to try his luck. Ayo. So he just go down the street. Then whoever let him in will let him in. It's a weird he thing that last time when you go to the club, right, you want, you try to dress um, older, well, yeah. like as a guy especially. Yeah. You try to dress older so that you also increase your scope. Because like girls don't want to date a guy younger and they kind of shit, right? <laughs> increase your scope. It's true. And then now at this age, you're just like, hmm. You just How do I look younger? <laughs> yeah. No, that's the thing. Actually, it's very telling because you are trying to look older. Or yeah. the girls also who go underage try to put a lot of makeup, right? But then it's too oh, much. Yo. You you <laughs> don't look older. <laughs> you know last time Channel 5, right? <laughs> Channel 5, you know, like US had this extreme makeover shit. Uh. Like, this, oh, it's like, it was all the hype. and But legit, they plastic surgery your ass. You know, they got like three to six months for your whole body transformation. Then they come out, wow, really power, you know, and Channel 5 also do. Uh, Channel 5. <laughs> Finally, I cover this to turn around, right? And they got this old man. I remember he's like 50, 60 years old. Like, oh la, you know? Then he, they just like, they just brought him on a cut. <laughs> they shave the sides. Then they, they, they just- give him a fit. They dress him in like track pants and track shirt. <laughs> <laughs> extreme makeover as a proper franchise eh, of extreme makeover. Eh. Oh, what, but, he say, I just <laughs> but did he look good? No. I mean, he look like a 60 year old man in track suit. He doesn't look bad. He looks his age, you know? Uh, but he's not supposed to look his age, is he? He's supposed to look younger, I thought. No? He's supposed to be mid over. No, like. I mean, oh, right, yeah, yeah he, they, they bought him a, like a. You know how young Raja will dress in his concerts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like exactly like that. Some At really what bo- age does it start getting creepy for men to go to club, though? Like for women, right? It kind of feels like they can continue going even after they grow up. 35. <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> 35 yeah. year old man going to a club. No, I think going to a club and then dancing in the middle of the dance floor is different. I feel uh. like for guys can keep continue going in the club. No, but it's weird though because if you go to the tables right where you have full view of the dance floor right, and you're like 50, it looks like you're looking yeah. at younger dancing. Like, but you okay. damn Which you are. <laughs> I, like you think about it though, the, the nights where we went with like baller baller people, that's what they are. Oh, they that's are like the 40, true. 50 year olds and then they just sit there. That's okay. Okay. I think right, you have to probably have a private room or a private corner that I think is cool. But then that's not the most expensive table you bought, you see. You have to be seen lah. Yeah. The idea is to be seen. The idea is to be seen. Like my, my pro tip, right? That's what I learned from my cousin. I learned it on my wedding night when we went to the after party. Uh. Which is not to tip. Some, sometimes the service is very good. Or sometimes you puke over the floor, you feel bad. You tip the, the cleaner, right? He did this thing where the moment we went to our booth, uh, I, I remember it was like, I think it was one altitude, right? Mm. Hey, um, yeah. And the, the first person that came into our order, right? He tipped the guy like 100 bucks. <gasps> 
And then the entire night he stood by our table. Don't tip at the end. Yeah, you tip at the end, you are contingent on if there's good service, I then I pay. You tip at the start, you bought yourself good service for Aww. the night. But I mean, maybe you tip $20, then okay, then like, maybe defeat <laughs> Then the they purpose, just run la. away. <laughs> yeah, but I remember he gave like 50 bucks or 100 bucks that kind. It's a great tip. And we still pee on the floor, so we tip again. Oh. Yeah. Any other tips? Any clubbing tips? Actually, I heard no. I heard of one right. Like I didn't do it lah. But a group of my friends right. They will pre-drink because they no money to drink at bars right. Mm. They're very young. Basic. So, so we they will buy like one point five liter Sorry, water. I also uh, do it. Coke or something. Five right? liter. One point five liter. The oh. big bottles right. So they how they they either drink it empty or wipe pour away right. Mm. Then they fill it up with vodka. But so, cannot bring in what? No no no. So they drink already. Drink it. Oh okay. All done. Bars ready. Bars ready. Then they cap and put inside the bush. All the bushes. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I have friends that will just go around the bushes to check looking out. for other people. <laughs> that, that, that is smarter. That is smarter. I mean, because it's alcohol, right? So it's not that tainted, is it? It's Wait, like so if you want to disinfect, yeah, yeah, what yeah. you do? You find alcohol. So no. after that, do you come back and continue drinking? From yeah. The so outside? when you come out, right, you're for, for smoke or whatever, right? And you want to get more buzz. I right? just get the top Yeah. Part. Instead, yeah. instead of paying for drinks, yeah. Because inside not very expensive. Yeah. yeah. No, that's what people use. You know, so you know, zuka, right? It's held in Sentosa on the beach, so the dance floor is the sand, right? Mm. I know of people. What they used to do is that. Like one week before Zuka <laughs> starts, they go and plant alcohol in the sand. So that they can dig their yeah. spot. How do they mark their spot? No, but then no, no, after no. that, Zook really will dig the floor. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's not there. They already. Already find it. But they, they thought that was a great idea, right? So <laughs> it is a great idea. <laughs> They like, take, then they sell. So right. they were like, you know, we cannot go two, three days before because they'll be really setting up. You have to go like a week before. Yeah. Find out which location. But how they zoom more? I maybe think there's stories going on. Then they kicked la. it while they were setting up. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe. Dig. never dig enough. Dig enough. I think only you can relate, or maybe you la too too young already, Denise. But like last time, right? Like, cause the chops are like actual ink one. It's not the UV ink one. Then yeah. you can go to the hotel. You go and put water. Then you chop for your friend. Oh. I never. <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure that like the chop is not <laughs> like that's a whole level of cheap. Yeah. Right? <laughs> really, really, really. No, so I feel like. If you're at that point, you just stay at home. You cannot afford to party. <laughs> no, like this the cat is like fair home will have been too expensive yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is like 18. This is like really, yeah. really like no money kind. So you go to like Grand Copton, then yeah, yeah. you put water, then you just. Well, I've never heard of this. Like, one. I always told myself, like, one day when I get a like, proper paying job, right, I'll put Grand Copton. You know, then go zoo after that, go and sleep. And then they move. Then they move. Then, move. then zoo move. Before I, before I make proper money. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, you know, like just now we spoke about the people who were too young and never go club before, right? There was a story I heard where this person, they went to the club and then they asked them where to buy ticket. Huh? Then after, <laughs> like don't have the, oh. like they wanted a physical ticket, like, you know, you go right. concert, then they go and right, then they only a, give the chop. He's very really disappointed. Okay, water. <laughs> <laughs> He's chopped on a piece of paper. Actually last time, right, there was this event, I don't know, I think it was called Traffic Light Party or whatever, right? So there's red, yellow and green bands. Mm. And what it basically means is that if red, right, means I'm attached, don't don't come and uh, flirt with me. If it's right. Uh, orange, right, I think it's like, I'm attached light, yeah. but come and flirt with me. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. But green is like, I'm single and, and come and get me, la, you know? Yeah. So then actually it makes life very easy because you don't have to keep like getting rejected or True. like girls or what. Yeah. And then the green one is basically saying, <laughs> you know, no, like they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, oh, you I mean, doubt it. That's not what it means, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. It doesn't. I mean, that's it's like interpreted. It's, it. I'm willing to make friends. <laughs> that's the excuse people say, right? Like, why are you on Tinder? Yeah, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm oh, there yeah, to make friends. To make friends, uh. Yeah, yeah. So I'm there to make friends. I'm a property so. agent. I just want to close some people. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is a really good idea. Like in, in Taiwan, they have stickers of "Touch Me Here." <gasps> yeah. So I mean, they just paste it. I mean, not that. I mean, there are people that do that. I just, the promo video is like that. <laughs> but no one actually does the it. Promo. Yeah. Stick where? <laughs> they put it, they stick it on the stick at their waist. Lah. Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah. there are safe zones. Because like, if, you, if you dance with a girl, like you, there's certain places lah, that you know you can go and then you the yeah. rest, right, you have to wait for her to use her hands to, to put then, you know, it's okay. Lah. Speaking of ways, right, I felt very, very bad. Because like I was I was dancing right, then I was sweaty already. With a stranger, like, oh no. No, no, my friends right, then I was sweaty. I'm like, okay, you guys go ahead. I'll take a break at the at the corner right. Then I she take old. Out one guy. <laughs> no stamina, yeah. <laughs> no, but I was you know my my outfit were all crop top and all that, so I'm really sweaty and sticky. Then got one guy right, he put his arm around my waist. Yeah. Then I, wow, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> then his hands stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, I feel damn paise, like, uh, yeah. then he just like, oh, can I buy you a drink? They're like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> then he buy yeah. his stuck there. <laughs> 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 like, mm, gross, yeah. I don't know. But it's normal la. I but the guy is thinking the same thing though. I want to say, but he just, at the point it's too late, you gotta call me. Yeah, he put it like, oh yeah, shit. Like, oh, <laughs> 
Fella. <laughs> no, but I think that there's, oh, there's a certain done. amount also of going, ah, yeah, it's fine. La. Like, we're all sweaty. We all came to the club. We know yeah, what yeah. that's all about. You all got in situations where, like, your whole group of friends, right? Because it depends what music you go to. And, like, my, my friends all love, like, hip hop, right? Mm. And I know a fair, decent amount of hip hop songs. But they'll be like, every song, right? And they're all, like, jumping and shouting, know all the lyrics, right? And so I'm, like, I'm trying to pretend. <laughs> So I'm like going like da, 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 mm. <laughs> And then like You figure oh, out what I feel so embarrassed for you Because I also <laughs> Yeah right And then I'm getting PTSD You can hear like the lyrics So you can kind of predict What the next one is going to be You know like yeah. wow. Me and you hitting up the clubs You know like, so, like You can kind of like Predict like right? Toilet <laughs> So you be the MC You, you intentionally say that Oh I'm only going to do The last word per line You know that's my job here So you like go Clubs yeah. What up? <laughs> you know, and then it's more like, rhyming words, more <laughs> rhyming words. <laughs> Yo, like my like I met Abu, which is a professional hype man, Mr. Boo. Love him, Mr. Boo. He he emceed my wedding, so I really love him very much. His job, right, which I couldn't believe, right? Like when I first met him, like, I think I asked him like a series of the most disrespectful questions. <laughs> 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 job real? Yeah, <laughs> like like did they contact you to be here or did you just show up? Because <laughs> his job was the hype man, so there's already a DJ. Uh. And he grabs the mic and then he just shouts whatever this guy shouts. You know, he, <gasps> he's the guy that shouts the, the put your hands up, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I have a friend that does that as well. But he is the headlining act. Mm. Like the DJ is a small, small one featuring Mr. Boo. Oh. He takes the mic, he just shouts shit, but it's, you realize when he takes a piss break, right? Yeah. You just miss the hype man eh. It's dead Yeah, yeah. He's so he's, important He's so good I, th- I think one thing That was quite interesting uh, And also shout outs to Rao Zan Who, um, who actually has This other podcast wow, All these names are coming back down eh. yeah. Nightlife is open eh. So like uh, Rao Zan and uh, Oli Des Has a podcast And I was listening to it The other day right, And they will say How important actually The MC is That people don't realise Because they're actually The protective barrier Between the public And, and the DJs Because sometimes There'll be uh, like Events right Where mm. the public will be like Hey DJ play this eh, Play this song yeah. eh. Like why you not play this song And whatever And the MC is actually Really also there to be like Hey oh. Like okay oh, come you, you talk to me you talk to me and then right. yeah. So they don't like stress out the DJ. Exactly that. Yeah. Because like the DJ there's so many things you need to focus on. You need to like prepare the next track, you need to like match the beat, mm. you need to like Wait, the DJ the doesn't ha- just have a set that they prepare at home, then they come here and just press play. They That's they, what I thought. <laughs> they have a They know list. more friends of DJ friends I had since the years that gave, gave me shit. They have a track list like, and then they know kind of like what the BPMs are, so they know that these are the beats, but then they can also kind of read the room so that they can move songs a little bit if they feel like uh. they need a bit more like to get people uh, there's actually a show and it's actually a really bad interpretation of DJ yeah, Zac Efron the Zac Efron one. Like shit I show. feel like I've seen this a trash show, like, eh? what I need to do is like I need to you know <laughs> 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 then they will count but, the BPM the, the Emily Retro Skoroskowski Emrata, Retros- 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 Emrata yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 then she was like <laughs> oh this is why I'm watching oh, the video so hot, no, Oh my god Yeah She's the only reason why I watched all the, the, the whole entire no, I only watched that <laughs> Hey guys, so we're in that portion of the show where we are answering some of your comments and questions. And we're going to go way back to July 29, 2021. The episode is How to Spot a Dirty Massage, Part 1. What a throwback. Oh, yo, shit. Massive throwback. So this comment is for me. This, uh, <laughs> it definitely was. Uh, comment by Felicia Go. Hey, wouldn't you like to know that? We need Pat's version of the Nuru massage. Like her train of thoughts before agreeing to go to the massage and why she was okay to trying it and her experience there, if that's possible. Can we get Pat to... Uh, to I'll get your perspective of Pat. What do you think? No, I, have, I, I would like to think I have a very good perspective because we have debriefed this extensively. Uh, nice. Clearly. <laughs> <Nice>. Repeatedly. <laughs> annually as well. Wow. Um, Solid. But the thing about it is that Pat needs to find job. <laughs> I, I have the privilege of not having to find a job. Someday down the road, this will come and haunt me when I need to find a job. <laughs> mm. Mm. But not today. So I think it's very hard to get Pat to come. I'll ask her. No, but the question that people have been asking on that episode, I feel like is, what is this place? Where is the place? <laughs> Where is the yeah, place? Yeah, yeah. So to say. I had a conversation with this with Jade Rasif and she forbids me from telling people because she, she loved the place. Because we, we want to go to... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh well. So too over the guys. years, I've ignored over 500 DMs. <laughs> the next time you're there, you just have to go and try as many. Actually, guys, just Google it. It's not that hard. I, I mean, I just Google it. It's not like I can read Bahasa or whatnot, right? I just Google the keywords. It's there. <laughs> but I promise you, I won't tell. 
from uh from August 12, 2021, is your workplace toxic? Again, guys, uh, we're doing this so that you go and watch our old episodes again, lah. Thanks, uh. No lah. <laughs> just kidding, no lah. La. So just that we can have conversations okay. with you. Um, Diana Kamal said, interesting that you guys brought up about the disparity. Um, Singapore felt working. A uh, Singaporean felt uh working in a French company and the lack of opportunities he or she faced uh being an Asian in a French company. I think if you were to look internally into many local companies, we the minorities face the same when we work in a company where the majority of the employees are of the majority race and not forgetting the many job postings that we see states that mandarin speaking preferred when it is not a job necessity um it's true yeah and admittedly it's quite sad to see around but i think something that's interesting that jumps out at me is the concept of like racial hires so is having like somewhat of a racial quota good or bad thing because um so like we have a colleague right that i've spoken to and she ex like she she said that there was a period of time that she felt like she was a racial hire. Like a token. And then that right. to her f- made her feel bad. Yeah. Because it's like- It's not on merit in this company. Hmm. Huh? No, 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 not, not, not when she was rich. Ah. <laughs> As in we cannot afford to make racial <laughs> hires. We need everybody to be productive. <laughs> <laughs> when she was hired here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And then like, so that kind of just made me think about like, the so heck? is this quota actually like good or bad? Like it's good in the sense that did you also tell her that we think she's very talented? Yes, and yes, also yes, that yes. we yeah. don't we <laughs> don't have a racial quota here. Yeah, also we cannot afford to do things for optics, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's very interesting, right? Because like like were they hired for their merit or was it just mm. to like mm. tick a certain box, lah, right? But I mean that's a starting point, right? Mm. It is a starting point to a certain extent. You look at um like you want to be a publicly listed company, sometimes they have quotas or guidelines to say that you must have females or minorities represented in your board yeah. mm. director. And it feels a bit strange. In a sense, now we are really low. We are making token hires, forcing a token hire to hit that thing. But perhaps that's a start. I think, I think yes, I completely see where you're coming from, but I think it's a good start to make sure that we are more aware of that biases like, that we right. have when we hire people. And then hopefully we don't need that quota. We live in a world where we don't need that quota anymore. Cool. Uh, moving on. So from an episode from September 2nd last year, uh, being a gentleman is now sexist. I believe it was the episode where we were like talking about oh, chivalry. Enjoyed, I enjoyed the episode. It was a really good <laughs> ad. So we have a comment from NLO. Very nice that you live by uh, initials. Uh, I got yelled for carrying something heavy at a donation drive before. That person later told me, you'll break your bones. Just leave it to the boys. Uh, I think assuming that this person is a female. So uh, she continued. Sometimes guys would uh, keep insisting on carrying things for me until I get annoyed and let them carry. Society is just weird, man. I generally want to help out when there's any lifting involved but countless men and women have stopped me I assume it's because I'm female and therefore biologically weaker question mark or maybe it's just because I look skinny but I lift weights regularly sometimes 140 to 200 kg Whoa. not bad you even lift but I just biologically can't up. talk up like a man uh, this is one of the benevolent sexism that I can't stand la. interesting do you have the experience People. No, I think the closest I had was like when I'm trying to be a teacher's pet in school, right? Then like, yeah, yeah listen, listen, listen. I like how honest trying. you are sometimes. No. <laughs> then the teacher will ask like the boys right, to carry the files to her. Uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to do it because I want to be a teacher's pet, right? Correct, correct. You want to go inside the office yeah. like, for the one minute of aircon, right? Right. <laughs> I can I just but, say right? I love doing it because all the other teachers right will see, in the staff room will see you being the, the chosen one mm, to do it, and I will purposely exactly, take my time. Exactly. She is a professional as <laughs> <laughs> No, I admit to it. I just didn't think it was that obvious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I admit to it. The only way to get like far in life, right? Yes, it's through your ma- like your own merit, uh, a little bit of luck, but also you got to make your, your own face. luck. Oh. Mm. You know, you got to make your own luck. So. S kissing sometimes is to a certain degree acceptable. But this is not the comment. It's not. It's not. Is about. No, but have you all ever had a female friend get angry at you right for insisting on helping? I won't insist that far la, so I don't think they get angry. Uh, so at what point do you back off? At what point do I'll you ask know? twice la. I'll say, uh. hey, let me let me help you la. Then you'll be like, no, 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 I can do it. Let me help you. Then you'll be like, I can do it. Then uh. I'll be like, okay. So I always make my second one right, like quite insisting, so uh. that if they really say they can do it, then I'll back off. But yeah. just now when someone go and fill dense water for him, then he say, I can do it, I can do it, but he totally never move. I did, I was moving slowly. <laughs> I was moving, I was moving. <laughs> Who's filling your cup? Charlene? How can you cannot abuse Charlene? Eh? I didn't! Okay, is it you have to understand, right? Charlene is super nice. She always offers to do a lot of stuff yeah. for everybody, right? So when too she much, like, eh? She it's grabbed it, right? Yeah. It's not to refill my bottle, she wanted to get another bottle of water for me. Right. So I was like, no, no, I'm I'm Going, I'm getting. I'll go get it myself. This is what women feel like when it's not helping them. So I should actually just let her, let her, let her help me. No, no, <laughs> cannot be. It's a tough society. No. Then I don't understand, <laughs> guys. Cannot 
Why you? You don't know the context, what? Why am I so? What's the correct thing here? Because if I faster go and help her, then it's as though I'm saying she's not capable of doing it. There's no correct thing in this world now. It's true. It's so, true. No, I wanna say I understand how you feel, so but there are also an equal amount of girls out there that are saying, "Hey guys, can y'all carry or not? Your guys, what?" Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So mm. it's like very mixed signals. I, I'm going to say this. I think a lot. If of John Paul were here, he would say, "Screw you. You yeah. should carry." It. I think a lot of guys do it right. Like I think all of the goodness of their heart. Yeah, it comes from a place of love. But I think there's also a subset of guys who also who feel in this world that there's so much pressures and don't know what to do. What's the right thing to do in certain situations? Like how I also don't know what the right thing to do in that situation, right? Where sometimes just be nice or just try to help out is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then to get this reaction, it's I think there's a lot of misunderstanding. I also don't want the right answer here. I don't want to insult you. Okay, so I we keep to the rule of stop at two. Uh. Stop ask at twice, two. Yeah, mm, ask ask twice. twice. Oh, you know what? Just faster go and get it before anyone else does. And then just say, get out of my way, I'm doing this. No, just ask twice. No, yeah, I, I quite like it actually after. Like if I offer the help and then you like, especially if it's something that you carry and then you insist on doing yourself. Yeah. I think that's pretty hard. Yeah. Nice. Always ask twice. And then stop it there. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Daily Catcher Podcast. If you like what you watch, remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Boop, 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 boop.